Hey coders and welcome to episode 6 of our form service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be taking a look at our next collection of items known as multiple choice items. So there are three distinct types of multiple choice items. You have the generic multiple choice item which you can see on the top rung of our three tier ladder. We have, the, again, the multiple choice item is basically you ask a question, you provide the respondent a, a list of selections that they can select, and then the respondent has to choose one and only one of those selections. And then, so this differs from the checkbox item, which is, as you can see in the middle of the screen, the checkbox item is very similar. However, you are providing the respondent more flexibility. So the respondent can now select one or two or three or as many as they want of the options. They can select all of them if they want to as well. All right, and then finally we have the list item, which is very similar to the multiple choice item in that you can only select one of the selections. However, this is set up more in a drop-down UI. And, then, and the reason why they do that is because if you have many, many selections, you wouldn't want that entire question filling up the entire screen. So they put it all succinctly within a drop-down so that, again, it doesn't flood up the entire screen. So the top six methods that I have prepared for you today are as insert type here item. And again, we've seen this in the prior episodes. This is me just being trying to be more succinct and, and saying, okay, if you wanted to get, uh, or if you wanted to typecast, say a list item, you could say as list item, or you could say as multiple choice item. All of this will work. It's the same uh, nomenclature through all of the different types. Similarly, we have add insert type here item. So you can say, add checkbox item, that's going to work just fine. And then we have set choice values, set choices, create choice, and finally show other option. So let's go into the code and have fun with some of these methods. Let's start off with the easy methods first. So if we go into our form, we can see that we just have one item on display for now, and it is a checkbox item when we have a selection of, or we have a list of different selections that the user can respond to. All right, let's say that we wanted to get all of these selections programmatically in the code. Well, to do that, again, well, one way to do that is to say form, and then we could use the method get items that we've seen in a previous episode. That will return for us an array of different items. And since there's only one item on the screen, we're just going to select the zeroth index and we know that we are getting exactly what we want in that way. So the method to actually get the choices is simply get choices. But if we type in dot get, we can see that we don't have access to that method get choices. And that is because again, when we get items, we are just getting a generic item. And getting the choices does not apply for a generic item. We need to get a specific type of item, i.e. the checkbox item. So how are we going to convert our generic item into a checkbox item? Well, we're going to need to type cast it. And the, and the method to do that is dot as and then type in whatever item you want to typecast into. So in our scenario, we want to typecast it into a checkbox item. So we'll use this method right here as checkbox item. Very simple. All right, now we can use the dot get choices method right here to get an array of different choices. Great. So actually, let me just uh, type in some extra code. Don't want, you don't have to worry about this too much. Um, this is just some JavaScript right here. All I'm going to do is uh, map each choice to the get value of that choice. So I'm just basically now converting that choice object into the string representation of it. All right, so if I surround this in a console log statement and hit save and hit run, looks like everything ran correctly. So let's just go into our logs real quick. And we may have to wait a little bit for the logs to appear. Let me just exit out of that and reopen the logs. And there we go. We have our array of different uh, selections all written out for us right here in the logs. So that's pretty cool. And that is how to typecast, again, a generic item into a specific item. In our case, it was a checkbox item. All right, let's keep moving on. So the next method that we're going to look at is how to add different multiple choice items to the form. And to do that, again, we need to access our form. We'll say something like add 
list item. We're going to add a list item in this scenario. And what this is going to do is it's going to basically add a list item right to our form. I won't do it yet because again, our list item is just going to be blank in this, in this instance. But let's uh, look at our very next uh, method, which ties into this very, uh, very well. All right, so the next method that we're going to look at is something called set choice values. So again, we added our, if we ran this, it would add our list item to the screen. But let's say that we wanted to actually provide the user or the respondent with a uh, selection of different options that they could choose, right? So to do that, one way to do that is to say set choice values. And what this does is it takes in a array, an array of string values. All right, so right here we have a perfectly, um, uh, perfectly written out array of different countries, right? So here's all the countries uh, in an array. Again, it's a very long ar array. That is exactly why we would want to use, say, a list item in, in favor of, say, a multiple choice item so that it doesn't, again, take up the entire screen. But anyway, say, let's say add list item, and then we are going to copy this list of countries into this uh, argument spot right here. And actually, let me just give it a name as well, or a title. And we'll say, please select your country. All right, so now if we hit save and we run it, then we should be able to check out our form now. And here we go. So again, this is our list or our drop down. As you can see, it's very, very long, but that's okay because we are just in the editor. Um, we are in the editor screen right now. If we go into what the respondent will see, they'll see just this very, very compact box right here. And if it says, please select your country, they can uh, click on it. And there we go, we have the list of options that they can choose from. So again, this isn't all appearing on the screen. It's not crowding out the screen. They can just select a single country and there we go, voila. It's all compact and succinct, just how it is displayed right here. All right, so that is one way, again, to set the choice values. There is actually another way and it actually provides you a little bit more flexibility. So let's showcase that right now. So let's say we're on our form and we want to now add a multiple choice item. Well, to do that, again, we would say form.add multiple choice item. All right, and let me just go ahead real quick and give it a title just so that we do not forget. We'll say set title and we'll say, please select your language. All right, so here we go. Let me just store that in a constant actually and we'll say const multiple choice item. All right, so again, one way to, um, one way to uh, programmatically insert all of your choices is to again use this method set choice values. However, this just sets a, an array of different strings into your into your form, right? So that's great and there's nothing wrong with it. I do it quite frequently. However, you can actually tie some metadata with that string. So you can actually tie some response data with that string. And let me actually show you what I'm talking about because I think it might make a little bit more sense if I write out in the code. All right, so here we go. We have our multiple choice item. And now let me paste that there. I will say dot, instead of saying set choice values, let's use this method right here, set choices. So what this does is it takes in an array of something called a choice object. So what we need now is to put our array, and let me drop that down, down a line just so that we can create some more space. All right, so to create a choice object, we need actually our item again. And then we are going to take a look at our very next method, which is create choice. So as you can see, we have just a generic create choice. And what this is, what this method does is basically the same exact thing as set create value or set choice values right here. All we do is pass in a string and that will create a choice for us. However, we have again, some of these optional parameters, which provide a little bit more control over the logistics of our, of our, or the flow of our um, form. So let's take a quick look at each of these. So this one, create choice, our first optional parameter is something called is correct. This is basically is if you are creating a quiz, you can select the correct answer um, on a, say, multiple choice uh, item. And that will be instantaneously graded. You won't have to go back. It'll know that if the respondent chooses, say, this choice, then if it's marked as is correct, then it will be indeed correct. 
All right, so the next one is actually some navigation items right here. So this is the page break item and this is the page navigation item. We kind of explored this when we looked at our layout items uh, video. But, but what this does is if they select this choice, say we are going and then after they go to the next page, we are going to navigate them to a certain page um, that we specify. And same with the page navigation type. So let me just showcase this right here, this optional parameter page break item. All right, so the value that I'm going to give for this choice is English. And let me create another choice, very similar to the first one. Instead of English though, we are going to say Espanol. All right, so here, um, if, if you notice, let, it's time to uncomment this, right? So this has been commented for quite some time. Now it's time to uncomment this. And we are actually going to uh, unco uncomment it, but also we're going to cut it and we're going to put it up right before we set the choices. All right, so here we go. So if they select English, what we're going to want to do is navigate them to the English page or the English, uh, the English page break, right? So let me just put that in right there. And if they, if they select Espanol, then we're going to want to navigate them to an entirely different page on the form itself. And that is going to contain the Spanish questions. All right, so now I think we are all set up. So if we hit save and we hit run, it's going to run and it it has ran successfully. Let's go back into our form. Again, now we have different sections on our on our form, right? So, but if we go into our uh, the form that the respondent is going to see, now we have this option down here. It says, please select your language. If we hit select, or if we hit English, and we go on to the next page, we can see that we are greeted with an English uh, page right here, right? I mean, you would want to put more items, obviously, on here, but we can see that it navigated us to hello and welcome. However, if we are a Spanish speaker, we would select Espanol, we'd hit next, and there we go. It now has navigated us to the Spanish section of the form, which is pretty dang cool in my opinion. All right, let's go back into our code and look at our very last method before we wrap up this video, and that is going to be show other options. So let's say that we are making a multiple choice item again. Um, let's see, if, let's just grab this real quick and let's paste it down here. Let's say that we have some uh, choices. So we'll say set choice values and we'll just do some very simple ones. We'll say orange, we'll say red, and we'll say blue. All right, so let's say that we're making again a multiple choice item and we have these choice values set for the respondent. But let's say the respondent, none of these choices really um, None of these applies to the respondent, right? So what we can do is we can actually provide for them an other option. And by default, it is enabled to or to false, but we can overwrite that by saying true right here. And actually, let me just run this and show you what I'm talking about in the form itself. So again, we are setting the choice values, but then we're also uh, setting another choice value called other. If we go into our form, uh, here it is right here. Let me go into what the respondent will see. We'll reload it. We'll select Espanol. All right, so here is the multiple choice item that we just created. Again, they can select orange, red, or blue, but if none of these really um, uh, apply for them, right, we, they can actually input their own selection and they can say something like purple. And this is what the other, uh, what the other option allows you to do is you can type in anything that you want right here. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. I know it was kind of long and it, um, it it had a lot of content to it. But if you did learn something and you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And I'll see you in the very next episode.